Shalom, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Chakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. And peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth. And much love to the one third of you believers out there, the innumerable multitude. I'm the brother Yeshaya, and I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right, um. Yesterday, I noticed that, including myself, right, that it was a lot of brothers that were uh, extremely vexed by the outcome of the pork strike. Right. It was uh, ongoing for only three days, you know. And the thing is, with, you know, with prophecy. You can't get caught up in the fact that just because Esau has something going on, that these things are prophetic. Don't get me wrong. However, it's not the fulfillment of the prophecy as we were seeing it. So you can't let your faith waver because of Esau's news. You know, um, and I'm not saying this happened to brothers, but I do know that feeling of being completely vexed and completely uh, overwhelmed may not be the best word, but through the spirit, if you can understand what I'm saying, like, because, you know, I, if I could give a tidbit, how, what helps me endure is uh, two things. One, I think of what Yahweh Shai did for us. That's first and foremost. I think how he endured the cross, how he continued to fight no matter what, no matter how troublesome it got, you know, throughout that trial, at any point he could have given up, right? He could have, when they, when they came to arrest him, he could have stopped. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, when he was uh, bleeding uh, sweat, he could have given up. When he was, when they captured him and persecuted him, he could have given up. When he was being spit on and, and being beaten and bludgeoned, he could have given up. When he was carrying a cross, he could have given up. You know, he could have even given up when he was on the cross. But through it all, he persevered and he fought on because he knew his mission and he knew why he was doing what he was doing. You know, so that's always the first thing in my mind of why it's important to continue on. Right? But secondly, um, I think of the teachers through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shah who has been set before us, you know. I'm sure there are many times that the apostles of Great Millstone have considered, like, uh, they thought it was about to wrap up for Babylon. But through it all, they endure, they keep their heads held high, and they fight through, and they push through, through the spirit and power of Yahweh So as our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and as our teachers, the apostles, we as students and learn and learn brothers from their their labors, we have to be in the same spirit, you know. And so I wanted to get I got, probably got about four scriptures that I want to get. But um, Esau's news can get into your head. And uh, the thing is, I, I always say prophecy is like a roller coaster. It'll give you moments of excitement. Then it'll go down. And then it'll go back up, and then it'll go back down. But all of these, the Lord says his words are faithful and true. So just because Esau likes to play with our heads and make little false flags and things like that, that don't mean the Lord's word is not going to happen. But you just got to stay firm to rebuke any demons that's coming into your mind and stay focused on the prize. And we're going to come out victorious through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem al All right, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 2. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 12, really. It says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go at two ways, right? You can't be doing but double-minded. You got to be like, I'm I'm about you, Lord, all right? And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this no matter what, no matter how hard it gets, how complicated it gets, man. It says, Woe to him that is faint-hearted, weak-minded, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Right. So you can't be weak in the mind because you won't get defended. You got the Lord says when we ask, we got to ask in faith, not doubting anything, because he that doubteth is like a wave tossing sea, uh, uh, 
in the in the in the wind, you know. So you can't. You got to be sure that this is what you really want, you know, because you don't want to not be defended when all hell breaks loose. It says, "Woe unto you that have lost patience," and this is the point. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Right? So, woe unto you that have lost patience. You can't lose patience. Patience means to suffer. You can't give up on the sufferings, but it's just because it's not suitable to your life and your happiness. Right? We talk about the condition of the battle. Right? And in this life, you just got to trek on. Right? You got to keep fighting even if things seem grim. You know, it says, uh, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways. You see, so you can't be getting weak out here just because it didn't go the way you planned or the porch strike didn't happen or C-19 didn't totally bring the world to a close. All of those thoughts, you got to put them shits in the chamber, man. You know, if anything, just be excited because all of those are signs that we're getting closer to the end. That's really how we're supposed to be perceiving it. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. I'm just as pissed as the next brother. <laughs> we're looking for the anything that the Lord bring this, bring Babylon the whore to her knees. Right. So that's why we get so excited when we see the porch strike, when we see World War Three popping off. But the Lord says in Matthew 24, he says, you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. And he says, these are the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. So we got to keep being patient through all of this. You know, like Ariella said, wake me up when the, when the C-Hip come out, <laughs> when the MOTB come out. You know, and that's really how we feel because, it's, you know, it's just like it's so vexing and daunting to your spirit to constantly see this place go on. You know, but at the same time, time Esau, when is when when I told the Akim in the camp, uh, when we first heard about this poor strike thing, you know, the brothers were excited about it. You could see the famine being an option out of it, but I, I let the brothers know. I say, hey man, like I, I want this thing to happen just like the next man, but don't get too too you know overexcited about what Esau's putting out there because. That's something that's with his, with his control. See, like C-19, it could have all been a hoax, but ultimately that's still out of his control. When it comes to pestilence, it's out of his, out of his control. But this is something that's within his control. Just like they did with, you know, all of the treaties they were making with GAD when they were doing uh, government shutdowns. You know, I used to get excited about the government shutdowns, thinking that it's going to make some things happen. You know, but it's like all of this is... Uh, uh, is a ploy, man. You know, and they work on the minds of the people by doing little things like that. You know, so as long as we stay faithful and stay firm and believe in how Bashim al Shai, all the extra stuff don't really matter no way. You know, we're just going to wait until the prophecies unfold, until uh, the sea hip comes out, until World War Three is at its fulfillment, until uh, um, Jacob's trouble is popping off. All right. This is Luke 21 and 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls, right? So you got to possess your soul. You got to talk to yourself and say, you know what? I'm about Yahweh Shem and I'm going to continue doing this no matter how long it takes. Now, do we hope that it's just this year? Sure. Do we hope it is next year? Absolutely. Right? Do we hope it's a year from that? But hey, Lord willing, it's not another five to ten years, you know? I don't believe you so, but if it is, you have to be mentally prepared to carry that on. And that's what's important. So in your patience, possess your soul, man. All right. Get your shit together in, in that in, the, in those times, man. All right. Mentally and spiritually. This is Habakkuk 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So the Lord is saying, at the end, these things are going to speak. That's why it is speaking. That, that, that damn uh, port strike, you know, that's fingers leading to a famine. You know, and they want automation and things like that. So they've come to a certain agreement. But 
you don't always know Esau's motives and why he does certain things. You know, this could be to, to get uh, more information to find ways how to get over automation. You know, this could be uh, more ways to, to d destroy ports, anything, right? Instead of going to those deep, dark rooms, you know, you don't know what's going on. And they sign on things for all of these people's lives. But ultimately, the Lord is going to have it collapse anyway. <laughs> That's the crazy part. But brothers, it's going to come. These prophecies are going to be fulfilled. That's why they're prophecies, right? That's why we prophesy, because they are going to happen. But, you know, it just it just takes a little time. But it's going to get there. And we're going to be rejoicing all the more for it. This is 2 Timothy 2 and 3. Now, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shammah God. You got to endure hardness, man. When you when a soldier goes out there and he's given a mission from his superiors, he just treks the hell on until the mission is complete. You know, you sometimes you might get a little tired. You might need to drink some water something like that. But you, you trek on. You fight on. Right? As a good soldier. Okay? Uh, this, is, this is the last one I'm getting. Last section. Luke 12 and verse 45. But and, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the maid servants and maids, maidens, and to eat, and to drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And so this is what's going to happen to many of the wicked out here. You see? But a lot of our people aren't watching. They 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 think that the Lord is not gonna come as a thief in the night and they're not looking for him. Right? So he's gonna come at an hour when these people are not aware. You see? And so your mentality about uh these these judgments that are happening, that's really what they are through the spirit. They're judgments. But the Lord is showing us that he's with us. That he, you know, all of those, those, you know, as much as it can make you down about it. But that's really the Lord saying, I, I got you. I'm showing you something, brothers. You know, just wait until my big finale. I'm giving, I'm planning, you know, uh, you ever seen those cartoons where like they'll put like uh, something that an animal likes on the ground. Like it'll be like Skittles or breadcrumbs, you know, a crumb trail. And then they just keep picking it up and following along the, le along the way. Now, at the end of the day, they're usually trying to trap them, but that's really the Lord keeping us on our shit, keeping us aware, saying, follow this path, you know? And that's what that's what we got to understand through the Spirit. So, hey, it's all, everything that we're talking about is going to come to pass in Yahweh Shemashah. It's going to protect us, and it's going to keep us, and he's going to show us the way unto righteousness. And these words are going to be our hold. These words are going to be our stay. And it's so far important. So I'm going to wrap it up with that one. I truly do hope this lesson was edifying. All right. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do well. And peace, mercy, to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.